Hey everybody, Kenneth Russell here. Hope you're doing great today. Before you are two beautiful looking Les Pauls. The problem is one of them is a fake. Let's find out which one. So I was talking with a friend of mine recently and we were talking about Gibsons and Les Pauls and fake Les Pauls. And he said, I actually have a fake Chibson, a, a fake Gibson Les Paul. And the story behind it was that he bought it and did not realize it was fake. And then he found out it was fake. And long story short, they went to court and everything. Believe it or not, the, the judge did not side on his side. He said, well, buyer beware. You should have known the difference. So I don't know, but uh, I was happy enough to, to get uh, this guitar and I'd like to, to do a comparison. The other guitar is another buddy of mine's. I don't actually own a Gibson Les Paul. Uh, I own an Aria Pro 2 Les Paul, but it's not a Gibson. So I wanted to kind of do a, a how to spot a fake Gibson. Now I made a video a couple years ago, maybe like two years ago, uh, when I was in a shop and I saw a fake Gibson and they had a real one next to it. And so I compared the two of them. And uh, this one is significantly better than that other fake that I had. Significantly better in the terms of the, the faking quality, not necessarily in the playing quality. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do a close up of both of these guitars and see if you can tell which one, just by looking at it, is the fake. And then we'll talk about all the differences. All right, first let's start here on the left. This Gibson Les Paul Custom. They just kind of go down here. Hopefully it'll focus on me. There we go. We'll just kind of get a slow look at this. Try to get everything on here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see the knobs. Let's take a look at the side here. Okay. All right, there's not much to look at on the body, so I'm gonna spend a little bit of extra time on the headstocks so you guys can see these. There's some of the body here. Okay, let's look at the other one. Here we go. Coming down here. Looking at the sides. Okay. Now these aren't the same model of guitar, but this will kind of give you a, a little bit of an idea. Here's the head. Well, hopefully that gave you enough time and enough to look at. If you need to rewind the video, feel free, but I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. Take a, uh, a pick of which one you think is the fake and which one you think is the real. We'll call uh, this guitar number one and this guitar number two. Leave it in the comment section right now before we move on in the video. I just wanna see how good you might be at spotting a fake just by looking at it. Might even put a card up here so you can uh, make vote on it through YouTube. Anyway, here you go, here's the big reveal. You guys ready? The fake guitar, the fake, the Chibson is this Les Paul Custom right here. This is my other buddy's guitar that is genuine and uh, this is the fake one. So how do I know this is a fake and that one is real? There's a, a few signs. Now, if, if you look at my other video that I made, that was basically, I found out it was kind of a Epiphone Les Paul that someone had Mess, shape in the headstock to make it look like a Gibson. And they did a poor job at it. This one is a factory made uh, fake Les Paul. This came from China somewhere. And actually they did a pretty good job at it. Now this is a few years old, but a lot of the things that, that Chipsons were doing bad before, they've fixed those. In other words, a lot of the things that, that were easy spots of fakes. They did a pretty good job on this guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up the, pick up the camera again and just kind of do a close up of all these things and, and show you exactly uh, why this is a fake. All right, firstly, if we look at the headstock, I don't know how well this is gonna come across, but 
you see how this G is tilted to the side a little bit? It's like it's it's almost like there's an italicized font on the G. Uh, the Gibson logo is straight up and down. It's not quite as italicized. Now that's kind of nitpicky, but it is it is noticeable. I'm not sure how well that's coming across on on camera or not, but it looks like that's just crooked off to the side there. Next thing that I noticed was um, this. I don't know this trapezoid sign that they have here. It just looks a little funky. You know, if you were to compare this with a uh, the real one, it just this just looks a little funky. So um, it's one of those things you go, ah, eh, it seems a little off. Like the the shapes of those triangles are not all the same. They're they're not perfect. They're it's all a little wonky. Um, here, the binding on the edge right here is not wrapped around. If you look at a real Les Paul, the binding on the on this goes over the frets. So you can see that it's it's on top of that. And here on the fake, these are not. They're just uh, they're like every other guitar, they're just kind of on the side there. So that's another way to tell. Uh, moving right down here, a couple things they did really good. Uh, sometimes you'll see that this is like a, a uh, like an octagonal shape or a six-sided screw. They did do the round screw, like the real Les Paul has. Um, the pickups uh, look pretty good. Um, there's probably some details that aren't quite right. I think these screws might be a little bit bigger than uh, would be on on the real one. Uh, this is an aftermarket. This is a real Seymour Duncan pickup. Uh, one of the things you'll notice sometimes is that these surrounds are, are bigger. The Epiphone versions of these um, pickup surrounds are, uh, are they're thicker than the Les Pauls, but those seem to be actually pretty good. Uh, the bridge too, a lot of times on the Chipsons, they used to have the, uh, the screw shape here that you could use, kind of like uh, Epiphone uses, and those, they did a good job on it. Just looking at the bridge, I wouldn't be able to tell um, perhaps other than the fact that it's chipping away, uh, but honestly, I'm not sure if the Gibsons would chip away like that either. Uh, the finish on it looks great. I mean, it's a beautiful looking guitar. Uh, my friend's guitar, uh, this is a beautiful looking guitar too. And uh, man, they did a great job on it. I did notice just by playing it that the, it's a little bit thinner, that it's about an eighth inch thinner, just the body is, um, when I measured it here on the side. Now the, the, the biggest giveaway on a fake is the number up here at the top. Okay, I don't know how well this comes across, but you see how deep those grooves are on that serial number and the made in USA? This is like, it's like those numbers have been routed out somehow and Gibson doesn't do that. When they do their serial numbers, they stamp them and it's not routed out. It's just stamped into the wood and it gets a lot, it's a lot less of a exaggerated number there. It's like the, these are, these are poking out here and on the, the real one, they're, they're more just pressed in. Um, and then finally, the last thing I noticed was these tuners, they say Grover on them. They're slightly crooked, which Gibson could make a crooked tuner tutor. They could not line it up, but these are slightly crooked. Like this one should be tilted down just a hair, but the logo on here is not quite right. The Grover logo there is too small. I compared it with another uh, set of real Grovers and the font like covers basically the whole width of this. It covers all the way around here. This just, it's just too small. Not sure how good that comes across on camera. Uh, they did a good job on the headstock, I think. I think it overall it looks pretty good and passable, even though it may not be quite perfect. It looks like the swoop here is a little bit more exaggerated than on this guy. Uh, it's not quite as deep in here, but overall pretty good. So on the last how to spot a fake Gibson that I made. There was a lot of comments in the comment section of who cares? It's all about how it plays. And on one level, I kind of understand that comment because you can have a cheap guitar that plays well. However, you know, on the used market, 
a Gibson Custom like this is going to be sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars. And uh, I mean, depending on on the year and depending on on you know how the economy is doing, it might be a little bit more, a little bit less. But you're still paying a really pretty good chunk of money. And so the idea that well, who cares as long as it plays good and sounds good, then you know it, it's just fine. I don't understand that way of thinking because I understand. Yeah, if I paid two hundred dollars for this and it played awesome, perhaps I can understand what you're saying. But if I paid sixteen hundred dollars for this and found out that it was fake. I'm going to be really upset, especially considering whoever first ordered this from China at the most paid like $400 for it because you can get these things pretty cheap. So I, I really don't understand that. Like, well, who cares? It's just a, it, you know, it's, it's as real as you want it to be or whatever. People say that kind of thing in the comments. To me, I don't understand that. I say, if you want a Gibson, buy a Gibson. If you want something made in China, buy something in China. I own quite a few char guitars from China. I have nothing negative to say about them per se, um, but you're paying for this logo up on top is really what you're paying for in a lot of ways. And it, that's fine. If you want to pay for that, that's fine. But you should be getting the real thing. So having said that, I'm going to plug these guys up into my Fender Basement 20, which is like the best amp nobody's ever heard of. And uh, Let's just see if there is a difference in, in how these two guys play. I'm gonna to try to play the same type of licks so that you can compare them. Uh, but let's let's find out how they sound. Well, there you have it, both of these guys being played. Um, my thoughts on it was there's definitely a significant better playing ability with the real Les Paul than the fake one. They look very, very similar. Um, even picking them up, they, they feel similar, but I don't know. This is definitely harder to play. I don't know if you noticed, but this was way out of tune, which made me first think, hey, this is a real Les Paul. <laughs> but uh, no, this is impossible to keep in tune. I literally tuned it right before I started playing and uh, it's, it, it's no way to keep this in tune. It just sounds, it just sounds bad. Um, so overall, there's, there's no way I would put this up to uh, a real Les Paul. I know sometimes people will say, oh, you could take one of these fake ones and swap out the parts and make them great. Um, I don't know, I just have differing opinions on that. I think that 
you know, one of the things that, that, that's cool about a Les Paul is the, or a Gibson is the history behind it. And, you know, it's, it's been around for so long and they're so iconic and all that. And I just wouldn't want a fake one in the same way that I, I you know, I wouldn't want a fake Mercedes. You know, I, I, can't, I can't think of, you know, if you somehow took a Ford and put on a shell of a Mercedes and we're driving around like, yeah, I got a Mercedes, I'm just awesome. First of all, I could care less if I'm driving a Mercedes or not, but you get what I'm saying. It's like, you're not really doing it. You're not really experiencing it. It doesn't really make sense why anybody would want to buy a, a fake Les Paul when there's so many other good brands out there that are in the same price range. You can buy an amazing guitar for three or $400, especially on the used market. And uh, so, I don't know, that's just my two cents, but what do you think? Would you ever buy a fake Gibson Les Paul, would you ever spend the money on it? If so, how much would you spend? What's like the, the limit to where you would say, nah, this ain't worth it. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful to you and hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'm Kenneth Russell. I make videos that help make musicians better musicians and hopefully this helped you. If you're a guitar player, this helped you. I'll see you in another video.